I think Sousa's mind was that the clarinet section was his violin section. Okay? We're, we're at a period of time in the history of the band world where composers were, were scrambling for music for this kind of new genre that was popping up and just kind of taking, taking not just the military world by storm, but now we have the professional bands with Sousa and Fillmore and um, what's his name, who's kind of the father of all of it, and I'm forgetting his name right now. Huh? W.C. Handy. Thank you. Yeah. Who, who, are, who are bringing all this stuff out. And Fillmore, um, besides writing great marches, wrote, uh, wrote some really wonderful transcriptions of orchestral works. And um, I think his favorite composer for doing that was Von Supe. We get great things like Light Cavalry, which I actually almost pulled out for this. And Morning, Noon, and Night in Vienna, the over, those great overtures. Um, why? Because they, there, wasn't just, there wasn't a lot of literature for band. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Gustav Holst had written his, his two suites. Ray Fong Williams had written his English folk song suite. Um, we're doing a piece that my, my symphon symphonic band at Weber State's doing this, this semester that was written about that period of time, the early 1900s, called Man and Bean. I don't know if any of you have played Man and Bean before, but what a great, what a great, great piece of music. And, and like a nine minute overture thing that we're gonna be doing with the symphonic band this semester. Um, and all this music was coming out, but when they did the transcriptions, this is the point I'm getting at, when they did the transcriptions, Fillmore um, said, how do, we turn a band, how do we turn an orchestra into a band? And what did he do? He said, well, we're gonna start with, what is the violin section? It's the clarinets. Okay. Now, where do you throw the saxes in? I really don't know. I don't think anybody's figured it out. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, uh, the horn section just kind of basically took over the horn parts. The saxes actually kind of took over a lot of the viola parts um, and the, those middle string parts. Um, but you have to understand that, you know, hey, I'm the viola section. I'm not super loud. So I think that Sousa's probably still thinking in that kind of vein right now um, about how these instruments came from an orchestra and work their way into the realm of the band. Now, in today's world, we don't even think that anymore. We just write for band, right? And, and composers have learned today that the tone colors available through the band are, I'm sorry, I hate to say this, but they're actually superior because we have so, such a varied and diverse opportunity for tone color with the different sounds and timbres that come out of band. Strings all sound the same. Singers all sound the same. And, and it's just wonderful how composers have, have looked at these different tone colors and how they can blend them and work them uh, to their benefit. And that's why writing for band has become so popular. Not to mention the fact that the orchestra people still will premiere a, band, a, a new piece for orchestra and then it finds its way into a cedar chest and stays there. And they go back to Mozart. Whereas in the band world, we get a new piece and we cling to it. But we're already forgetting some of the greats. We're forgetting people like Alfred Reed. We're forgetting people like Frank Erickson. Mike and I have played these guys. Clifton Williams. They're just not getting played anymore. And it's sad to me. So I'm doing my best to make sure the world doesn't forget them. 